This next poem, this next poem um, is inspired by any of you women who have ever looked at your man with that awesome degree of contempt, <laughs> hatred, spite and malice that only you women can have for a man and uttered those words made immortal and famous by Anne Robinson, you are the weakest link. <laughs> you never found my G-spot and you couldn't spell foreplay I was looking for Adonis and found a lazy, lousy lay. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> You've got clumsy, fumbling fingers. You're a man with no finesse. You never could unsnap my bra or just unzip my dress. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> You'd never heard of tantric sex and you couldn't make it last. You'd start things off at 10 o'clock and shoot your load by quarter past. You are the weakest <laughs> link. Goodbye. <laughs> Uh, Carol was longing for a subtle touch, and you'd grope her like a plank. Give her the choice of sex with you, and she'd rather have a Mars bar. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. I'm sat at home, and the telephone goes, and there's a friend of mine on the line complaining that apparently you just can't find a man who does not tell lies. She said to me, it doesn't matter whether it takes a week, a month, or a year, you're eventually going to find out that Prince Charming ain't nothing but a lying toad, and you won't hardly recognise him from the guy you thought you'd met. I said, forgive me, but that's a bit rich coming from a woman, given how often we can't recognise you the following morning. <laughs> so I put the phone down. I put the phone down, and I, I set about writing a poem that I've been wanting to write for a long time um, about the falseness of women out on dates. Um, it's called Why a Woman Turns the Lights Off or Why a Man Always Leaves Before the Woman Wakes Up. He can't believe what's happened to the woman of his dreams. He surveys this sleeping beauty with barely muted screams. He didn't think he'd been that pissed, but now he's not quite sure because his woman lying next to him he's never seen before. <laughs> Last night she seemed so stunning, a drop-dead gorgeous blonde. But in the night, some wicked witch has waved her ugly one. <laughs> Had she ever kept the lights on in that vital quarter hour, he would have seen she disappeared when she popped in the shower. First, she shed her hair extensions, and then pad by pad her bust. And slowly, she dismantled the object of his lust. And then she used her normal shower gel, which refreshes night and day. But this time it had a special touch, and it washed her tan away. <laughs> <laughs> and though she spent an hour or more painting it in place, she then applied this facial scrub that would remove her face. But the lights were off. The room was dark when she slipped into bed, and the vision of her loveliness still lived inside his head. But the room was dim, and so was he, and lager fueled his lust. And he didn't seem to notice that she'd lost her hair and bust. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he was aware of it, if he was aware of it, he didn't seem to mind, because two were one in passion and their bodies intertwined. And of course, he felt like he had done his best, and he swore he'd heard her moan, while in her head she's thinking, his bastard better phone. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the falseness of her hair and nails is not what really matters. But in the cold, harsh light of day, his dream girl lies in tatters. And so he did the dirty deed he'd done so many times before. He silently slipped on his clothes, and then he bolted for the door. <laughs> but his final act of cruelty, as he sneaked out of the hall, the bastard took his number back to make sure she can't call. <laughs> uh, and that... That is because all men are bastards. That is because all men are bastards.
bastards and they'll break your fragile hearts. Their tiny minds consumed by football, beer and tarts. Shallow, pleasure-seeking, with eyes for legs and bust. All men are bastards and you won't find one to trust. In pursuit relentless when they're out chasing skirts, it's devil take the hindmost and they don't care who they hurt. All men are bastards and the truth could now be said because they're useless in the kitchen and they're mostly crap in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he's looking for your G-spot. Well, the chances are he's lost because men are useless bastards as you'll find out to your cost. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I did a performance for Cancer Research. I put a book together, which most of you have seen, Poets in the Pink, and I desperately wanted to call the book Party at Barrymore's. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to call it Party at Barrymore's, and they didn't even want to see the poem. They were so, so nervous. Um, so nervous that they, they, they didn't manage um, to phrase their words to me very correctly. They said that uh, they were scared shitless. <laughs> they said they were scared shitless that Michael Barrymore and his people wouldn't like it um, and they were even more scared that they then would sue the arse off them <laughs> but I wanted to call it Party at Barrymore's he was our favourite personality that's what they used to claim till pointing fingers then accused was Barrymore to blame for years he charmed the nation as he played the simple fool but that ain't so appropriate. Oh, we're bodies in your pool. <laughs> this stranger floating in your pool, was he alive or dead? Michael just said, and oh, he lost the plot. He panicked and he fled. Now, I don't care if he was in an alcoholic haze. There surely is no better time to utter his catchphrase. But he never <laughs> used his famous words. <laughs> Not on that tragic night. No, Stuart Lubbock never heard. I'm all right. You all right? <laughs> And all right, you might caution me. Who knows what we'd have done? But it's quite clear what Michael did, because he thought of number one. <laughs> you see, if there's someone drowning in your pool, you jump in and rescue him. You don't stand around debating, I'm not sure if I can swim. <laughs> and I might not be Einstein, but I'm no simple fool. Barrymore was six foot five. How deep's a soddy pool? <laughs> <laughs> You've been fabulous. And um, mm, thank you. Thank you.